Thank you very much, Pastor Light, and thank you so much for convening the, this very significant uh, series of meetings. And I want to greet all my colleagues in particular. I want to greet Apostle Pearl Cooper, my dear friend, who is also on the platform, who will be joining me in ministry tonight, today. And we just greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I bring warm greetings from the South African Parliament to all our visitors from other nations. And we thank God for mighty men and women of God that are rising at this time to take up their mantles. So I'd like to share briefly with you about Nehemiah, and then we will spend a time in prayer. And I know I also look forward to Apostle Pearl's ministration ministry as well, as she also has a clear understanding of governance as well. And it's been wonderful to know her for many years and to travel with her to Israel. So warm greetings as well to everyone. Let us firstly just bear in mind that Nehemiah was a political governor. And he ministered at a time with Ezra, when Ezra was ministering and rebuilding the temple. At the time, he was a contemporary of Ezra. And we know that at that time of Nehemiah, Jerusalem is constructed, the walls are rebuilt. And what is more significant is the covenant with God was renewed and the people are reformed through the ministry of both Ezra and Nehemiah, the political governor. And I think this is very, very important when we consider the mantle of Nehemiah. He was working together as a governor with Ezra. Ezra deals with the religious restoration. Nehemiah is primarily concerned with Judah's political and geographical restoration, but then also ministers later in the reformation of the people. So we see in Nehemiah, firstly, the reconstruction of the wall from Nehemiah 1 to 7. Then we see the restoration of the people, which is from Nehemiah 8 to 13. And chapter 9 is probably the most significant that at the completion of the war, the nation reaffirmed its loyalty to the covenant and obedience to God's conditional covenant. And I think that is very, very significant. But it is important to note, and I think this for all of us as leaders, when we look at our nations around us, let us put ourselves in the position of Nehemiah. He was the cupbearer to the king. He was very significant in as much as he didn't sit back when he heard that the walls of Jerusalem lay in shambles. He felt he had to act. He did not allow fear, complacency to distract him, but he saw a problem, he saw a solution, and the mantle was upon him because he experienced the favor of the king that granted him his request to go back to Jerusalem. And it is significant that with that favor as a political governor, the Jewish nation needed only 52 days to rebuild, rebuild a city that had lain in ruins for 120 years. So as we minister in this regard, it's so important for us as leaders in our nations to look around us and to see many of our nations. And I look at South Africa and I see our walls, our moral walls are in this a time of destruction. And it is time for us as leaders to rise up in our nation and rebuild the walls of our nations, the moral walls. Now, it is also very important that we learn a lesson from him as a governor. Firstly, he did not eat from the governor's allowance. He realized his people were in a desperate situation. Just think of South Africa, our people are in a desperate situation whilst our political leaders continue to eat from the governor's allowance. And we see widespread state capture, corruption. He also did not levy heavy taxes. He refused to buy real estate, unlike previous governors. And he stayed committed to hands-on construction, even when he was criticized and even threatened by the enemies of, the, of, of Judah. Sanballat and Tobiah tried to discourage him. But he was so encouraged by the, what God had called him to do. Even when they tried to discourage him, he said, I'm doing a great work, Nehemiah 6 verse 3. 
I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I go down and meet with you? And because of his leadership and because of his commitment to God and because of his prayer life, he drew the best out of his followers. And they completed the wall in 52 days to God be the glory. And at that end of that stage, it is significant in Nehemiah 6 verse 16 that says, when all our enemies heard of it and all the nations around us saw these things, they were very disheartened in their own eyes for they perceived that this work was done by God. Just think if our nations were restored, our moral walls were, were restored, and people will give glory to God. We in South Africa are known to be a Christian state, but our nation is in, the walls are in such a bad state. So friends, it's very clear with his governor's mantle, he had a number of characteristics. He had a compelling purpose to rebuild the walls for protection for the Jewish people. He had a clear perspective. He did not let any fear cloud his view or cloud the future vision. And he had continual prayer, praying about everything and gaining God's favor. Like Daniel, he had great courage. And he had to, he had to contend with both external pressures and internal pressures. And this is very significant because his own people, besides the outside pressure, his own people started to also come and criticize him. And he was very, very uh, firm with them. So friends, he approached, the way he came, he approached, firstly, he looked, he approached key influences, he assessed the situation, he met with the people, he cast the vision, he encouraged his followers with great leadership. And they then bought in and said, let us do this. We can do this. In, in, in Nehemiah 2 verse 18, let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to this good work. We can in South Africa, we can in Africa, we can in other nations. With this mantle of governance, we can rise up and rebuild our nations. And in a few minutes time, that is what I want to start praying into that mantle of Nehemiah that we can together rebuild our nations. And it is important that he did not allow any fear or intimidation to come upon the people as they were rebuilding the walls. He said, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord. Great. your wives and your houses. The work is great and extensive. The sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. That this time, when we see every aspect of our Christian civilization is under attack, marriages, our families, we see our moral fiber under attack of our secular humanism. And what is our response to this call? Verse 30, I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. But sadly, God says in Ezekiel, but I found no one. Therefore, I poured out my indignation on them. I've consumed them with the fire of my wrath. I've recompensated their deeds on their own heads. Father, May we not be found wanting at this time when you wish to rebuild the walls of our nations. Father, will you find willing and able Nehemiahs, Daniels, Esthers, Deborahs with the mantle? Help us, Lord, to contend for that, Lord. Help us, Father. Your word says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people mourn. Father, our people are mourning. Our people are crying out, Lord, your word says, blessed is the nation, but God is the Lord. And the people whom he has chosen as his own inheritance, Father, 
Jesus. We come before you and we contend for the mantle, the mantle of Nehemiah, Lord. The mantle of Nehemiah, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Like Daniel, before you, we pray that, Father, we as leaders have
Father, we thank you for the fact that you are moving that you are moving in our nation, that you are moving, Father, to go on to the way that Father, we thank you, Lord, we thank you, Lord, we thank you, Lord, May I meet yourself, uh, Pastor Steve? May I meet yourself? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers mm. at this time. We thank you that you answer our prayers and that in so doing, you raise up the righteous leaders of our nations, those that are called. We thank you that we do rebuild the walls of our nations that will lead to revival, reformation, 
and restoration of our people. We thank you, Lord, that we shall rebuild the old ruins. In Isaiah 61 verse 4, that we will raise up the former desolations, that we will repair the ruined cities, the desolation of many nations. And may we answer the call of those that have gone before us, such as William Wilberforce, who said, I call on all of you who are Christians, boldly stand up for the cause of Christ in an age when so many who bear the name of Christ are ashamed of him. On your shoulders, rest your country's fate. It is up to you to suspend its fall. Thank you, Father. We respond to the call to take up our position on the walls of our nations, to be watchmen on the walls and rebuild the walls of our nations. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Father. In Jesus' Thank name, you. I hand over to pass the light. Thank you. Hallelujah. Wow. Steve, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's, it's a pleasure to have you here this morning. You have you've been a blessing to this platform again and again. We celebrate the grace of God upon you and upon your team in the, in the parliament and all that you people are doing on behalf of the kingdom of God and on behalf of every one of us. You are standing to speak for. May God bless you and continue to strengthen you and your team.